Hey y'all, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about C Sharp's variables. What are they, why we use them, and how they work. So what exactly is a variable? Well, a variable is simply a place in memory where you can store information. Think of it as a box that you can put stuff in. However, a variable can only hold one piece of information at a time. So if you put something into a variable's box, if you try to put something else into that variable's box, it will simply get rid of the first thing it was holding and hold the second piece of information that you put in it. Now each variable in C Sharp has a name and a data type. And because C Sharp is what is known as strongly typed, each data type of a variable must match the type of data that you are storing in it. So for example, if you have a variable that is supposed to hold a number, you cannot make that variable hold a name because it is an incompatible type. In order to store that name, you would need a name or a string of characters type of variable. Now when you create a variable, what happens is your program blocks off a chunk of your RAM equivalent to the size of that variable. So there are different types of variables for the different types of information that you can store, but also for information that's going to be stored in a larger or smaller range. For example, you wouldn't need a four foot by four foot box to store something that's only about six inches tall. You would need a six inch by six inch box. And the same is true with variables. If you have a value that is only going to be from zero to 100, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a variable that can store information in the billions of values, positive billions or negative billions, because it's just too big. Given that that is the case, there are some different variable types that we can use to more accurately manage data in our programs. Now, in general, there are two classifications of variables. There are the primitive data types and objects. Now, we will not be talking about objects too much in this course, the exception being the string variable, but that's it. We'll cover objects in a future course in, at some point down the line. But for now, let's take a look at the categories that make up the primitive data types. Now, the primitive data types are generally broken down into two types numbers and truth values. Now there is an additional type called a character, but at its core, a character is nothing more than an integer data type that we've just kind of assigned a character value to, but it is still a number. So let's take a look at the standard integer data types and extra C sharp integer data types first. Now C Sharp has signed and unsigned integers, meaning that some of their variables have positive and negative values, and some of them only have positive values. The byte is an unsigned byte, or an unsigned integer, because it only stores values from 0 to 255. But you'll notice that it can store 2 to the 8 unique numeric values. The short, int, and long values are signed integers, and they can store 2 to the 16th and 2 to the 32 and 2 to the 64 respectively, where half of what they could store is designated to the negative side and half minus 1 is designated to the positive side of their values. Now it's half minus 1 for the positive values because 0 is directly there in the middle. So those are the standard integer types, byte, short, int, and long. And you can see their ranges. Now C Sharp also has, as I said, unsigned integers, where the S byte, however, is the signed version here. Now these are different and not in a lot of programming languages from what I have seen. So the S byte or signed byte still holds values in the two to the eighth range. However, now half of it is in the negative and half of it is in the positive. U short, U int, and U long, however, are now unsigned integers, meaning they use all of their 2 to the 16th, 2 to the 32, and 2 to the 64 
bit representation, and unique numeric values to go from zero to the absolute maximum value that each data type can store. Now, how do we decide between whether we should use an int or a long or a uint or a ulong? Well, you'll notice that for an int, its maximum value in the positive is 2,147,483,647. So if you need to store a value that is slightly larger than that, but less than 4,294,967,000, 296, you should use a uint instead of an int because it's still only taking up four bytes of memory. However, if you need to source a value that is going to be over 4 billion, you might want to use a long or a ulong. However, if you need to store a value that is larger than 18 quintillion, you might want to be using a different data type called a double. But you can generally choose between which integers that you need to use based on their ranges as long as you have a good approximation of the range of values that every given data type can store. Now while all of the data types we've talked about previously were for storing integers and only integers, if you needed to store a real number or a number with a decimal place, you could use a floating point type. Now there are three floating point types in C Sharp. We have the float, the double, and the decimal. Now floating point types after a certain point are just an approximation. And while they do have some digits of precision, there are some things that can happen that will lose that precision depending on how large or small a number actually is. And you can see those digits of precision on your screen. So now that we've covered a ton of information about variables, let's talk for a second about how we actually create and store information in them. So you can see a bunch of variables that have been created here, and they're all underlined right now, and there are 14 warnings in our error list simply because we have created a variable, but we're not using it for anything. That's a warning because every variable that we create, remember, takes up space in memory and blocks out a portion of it for the program to use. So let's just take a look at these, right? We have the standard integer types, the byte, short, int, and long, set to some type of values. Now every variable has a data type, which is the byte in this case, and a name, which is whatever you type directly after the data type. So byte, b, and then if we want to store information in it, we simply put equals, which is the assignment operator, and then whatever we want. And as long as this variable data type can store the data that you're trying to store in it, the assignment will be correct, the syntax will be happy, and you will not receive a compiler error. But with some variables, they require some extra information to make sure that what you're storing in there is correct. So let's take a look at our floating point types. Now, for double, which is the most common floating point type used, you don't need to add any extra info. You can simply put in a real number there to however much precision that you want. For a float, however, you'll notice that I have a decimal number, but I also have an F after the number. Putting an F here lets the compiler know that this is a float literal value. A literal value is just a source code representation of that value. So for all of these integers, we just typed out the integer and the code understands, hey, that's just a hard-coded value that we're going to assign to a variable. But for particular types, like I said, sometimes you need to put some extra information. So if you're storing a float value, you'll need to write a float literal and make it a float literal by putting an F. Now for the decimal data type, for its literal, you would put the letter M after the decimal to let it know that that hard-coded literal is a decimal literal value. Now our other primitive data types we have are uh, the char, the bool, and an honorary primitive of the string. Now the char just holds individual characters or Unicode values but these all have an integer representation. So technically it's an integer value, 
but we just use it to store individual characters. The bool value, on the other hand, stores true or false values. So we'll get into bool variables a lot more when we start talking about decisions, but just know that we have a variable for evaluating whether or not something is true or false. And then we have an honorary primitive. Now, strings are technically not primitive data types, but they are used frequently enough that they're kind of considered primitives, but they are not primitives. And when you write a char literal or a string literal, you are going to need some markings that you're writing, not just a variable name or some type of code. And the literal markings for a char is a single quotation mark around whatever it is you're storing in that char variable. String variables, on the other hand, use double quotation marks to mark something as a string literal. So you have already worked with string literals in the first program when we wrote out hello world inside the console.writeLine statement. All right, so this video has been a ton of background information on variables and how they work and how we write them. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use variables to store information and write a program that will interact with a user. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.